Hey there, welcome everybody. This is Incorruptible Mass, where we investigate uh, why our state legislature is so broken, um, what we could have here in Massachusetts if we fixed it, and uh, how you can get involved. So I'm here with my super amazing co-hosts, um, Mr. Jonathan Cohn and uh, Mr. Jordan Berg Powers, if you would uh, introduce yourselves. Yeah, uh, Jonathan Cohn, he, him, um, a kind of activist based in Boston, has been involved in a progressive issue in electoral campaigns for the past eight years. My name is Jordan Berg Powers, I use he, him, and I am coming from a remote location, a remote location on vacation. That's too much to say at once. Love it. I'm Anna Callahan, Ms. Anna Callahan, she, her, um, coming at you from Medford. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about amendments. So I, I love this topic in part because we got on the, on the Zoom call today and I was like, hey man, what is an amendment anyway? How is it different from a bill? Don't they just take bills and then they just take the entire text of the bill and they turn it into an amendment? Like what, what's the difference here and why are amendments uh, kind of dumb? <laughs> why, why do amendments sort of show off our inability to pass policy? I think mm -hmm. to me that's, What's interesting about amendments is it really highlights the fact that we are totally incapable of passing policy. Um, so I'm actually gonna go ahead and, uh, and, and just hand it off to, uh, to Jonathan. Um, you were talking a little bit about how the purpose of an amendment mm -hmm. is to highlight something that is not a foregone conclusion in a bill. Exactly. So like the, the typical way one would think that an amendment would work would be that you see the, the text of a bill that's about to approach the floor and some things, and you think that something is missing from it, or you think that something is, is written poorly, maybe it, it, whether it's a, a gaping intentional or gaping unintentional flaw, or you want to you wanna change something entirely. Maybe you want to strike a section or add a section because you want to have meaningful changes that right? with amendment is noting that you have that kind of ability to add something to it or and technically it can be a subtraction in this case as well. And so that, so one would think that that would actually be kind of a, I would mean that like there was some type of engagement prior to it coming to the floor. You might've lobbied for something to be included. You lost out, you want to try again on the floor. You maybe um, want to show who is not supporting is not, this thing, right? Exactly. You want to highlight? You might want to try this, exactly. And that's why the, for bringing a roll call vote, which you can do with an amendment, the other ability is it's a way of taking things out of pro the process. That you can't choose whether or not your bill advances. That goes through the whole legislative process. It goes through committee hearings. It goes through the committee, like multiple committees have to move something forward. It needs the grace, the good graces of leadership to get to the floor. An amendment that says you don't need that approval. You just draft it, you file it, and you are the one who can decide what to do with it. There's a lot of lobbying that will happen around that to get people to possibly withdraw the amendments, but they're the only ones who can do, who can, who can either push it to a vote or withdraw it. Um, and then to push it whether or not that's a voice vote or a um, whether it's a voice vote or a, a recorded vote is also up to you as the as the person filing it. Um, and the other thing would be on that would uh I'm going to note with that, but yeah, uh, sorry for that kind of brief digression, but it's typically kind of the assumption that something didn't get through the standard process with a bill moving forward. And you want to, and you want that last chance to move it forward before the bill, before the bill or issue gets, issue is done. With. Anything to kind of to add to that, Jordan? No, no. And I, I just, just to move the conversation forward. Uh, instead, in Massachusetts, <laughs> we try to pass actual legislation through an process, right? So most states pass bills, but our state doesn't pass bills. It doesn't get things out of committee. Um, and because the speaker has total control of the committee process, actual bills that could actually affect people's lives in substantive ways, in ways that would positively transform not just a few thousand, a couple tens of thousands of people, but millions of people who live in our state, the only way to pass them, or at least to have the issues in those policies raised for, mm -hmm. for elected officials to talk about is through an amendment process, which is like the most bonkers way of showing how broken our system is, that we try to pass 
a substantive legislation through a process that's meant to amend the bills. <laughs> and, and I'm going to jump in with the, the next level of bonkers, which is that what we normally hear about amendments is that this amendment passed like, oh, the Senate passed an amendment 39 to zero. <laughs> exactly, because that's so. So many of the times you actually see amendments passed, they're often, when it, especially when it comes to budget season, in the Senate there'll be unanimous votes. In the House, you often see what's called consolidation of amendments, where they take together all of the amendments that cover a subject area, put them together, throw them aside, figure out what what additional like earmarks they want to add for that, rename it and then vote on it unanimously. And when you have things like that, where if you have uni unanimity or only token opposition, it always raises the question of why wasn't this just in the, like the originating bill, right? Because when you think about amending a bill, it's, you typically think that there was some fight that you want to continue forward. Because either, either you don't think that you, you will win and you want to show how show the actual kind of divide that exists. You think that with a little bit of fighting, you can you can get that majority that you need. But if it was if it was unanimous and there was no clear like major lobbying campaign to make that unanimous, it just feels like a certain theatrics where it's left out so that you can file it and then you can be the one to take credit for it because it was your amendment. Whereas in a base budget or a base bill, it doesn't belong to you. Yeah, should have just been in the bill, right? Yeah. <laughs> why, 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 it was unanimous. But, it was in the like, bill. Why waste anybody's time? <laughs> yeah, totally. I, mean, I, I think it, 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 highlights, it just highlights that this whole amendment process is really just about show. It's not about like actual trying to, you know, a legislative process. It's for show in the broken process that we have in our state house. So, you know, the other one that drives me the most crazy is every year during budget season, you'll get all of these organizations will say, you know, call your person to, to sign on to sponsor this amendment to the budget. We want you to pass this amendment to the budget. But then they know that, that not only is that not going to pass as a part of the budget, but actually they're not even going to vote on it. They're going to pull it mm -hmm. before it's um, before it even has a chance to, and by pull it, it means they're going to say, Mr. Speaker, we'd like to amend this bill. And then they'll say, never mind, Mr. Speaker, we're not going to amend, we're not going to ask you to amend this bill, which is the silly in the world. Who would ask for an amendment and then say, JK, <laughs> right? Except if you want just for show, if you want to go through the process of pretending you care about you while doing nothing substantive to actually care about the issue. But more importantly, because I think we always talk about this as issues, the people who it affects, right? You don't care about the people it affects because you won't actually demand that people stand up and say yes or no on this thing that matters. And the more important an issue is, right, the bigger the issue, the bigger the change that they're trying to do through the amendment process, the least likely it is to get into the budget process, right? Mm -hmm. If you're trying to make a bill that should be a bill and amend the budget, guess what? This is not going to happen. It's just unlikely. Yeah. You, you know, and, and again, because their state house is broke, it might happen. Because it's a lottery yeah, it's a, system. There's no rhyme or reason. It's a lottery system, but like the lottery, 99.9% .9 of the time, you're going to lose. Yeah. <laughs> but you're holding them down for that 0.01%, you might win. Yeah, yeah with, with that 0.01% chance being when like house leadership decides that they want to use the budget as the vehicle to pass something, then you're golden because somebody high ranking will file it for you. And why it's not just being passed as a bill is, a, is unfair, but it's just easier to just take the text that you want, vote on it as an amendment, and move on. And an example that happened last uh, term that I heard about was the, there was some climate legislation that was really important to the, you know, a lot of uh, outside organizations and a lot of people, and it became an amendment, um, which meant mm -hmm. that it really could have been brought forward by anybody, um, but the person whose name was on the bill was pretty public about their ownership of the bill. And you know uh, this concept, and, and what they meant by their ownership of the bill is, don't you dare put forward my bill. That's mine, it has my name on it. It is only me, if I pull it, then no one else can put it up. 
right? That's mm -hmm. the part of the culture of the state house that people sort of obey these bullying tactics. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I just, I, I want people to think about the, the idea that, you know, somebody has ownership of a policy because mm -hmm. their name is on it, they own it, and only one out of 160 people is permitted to, which is not the law. I just want to be clear about this for people listening. There's no rule that says that, that someone else cannot bring this forward. This is purely the culture and the bullying that happens inside the state house that says you who promised outside organizations and your constituents and a bunch of other people that you would bring this bill forward because it matters, you cannot do that. Don't do that because I will be mean to you if you do that. And people give in, right? So this is all, this is this culture that happens at the state house and the group think about how important your relationships are, that your relationship with another person inside the state house is more important than saving the planet or, you know, not bankrupting everybody who, you know, has medical debt or any of these other things that matter to us, to constituents, to the 7 million people who live here in Massachusetts. And I think it's important because the pushback against this is always like, well, this is how it works. This is how you'll get things done. And the thing I always say is like, yeah, but except that no, most things don't get done. Like, again, it's like winning the lottery. It's like, mm -hmm. it might, it is how things get done. And your thing might get done, but it's probably not going to get done. See the fact that there's still no major legislation on housing, no major legislation on, on, on the environment. They still funded the Big Rules Act that they themselves passed, right? Like, e like we, you know, we have to be perfect to get the opportunity to pass things that they should just be passing. <laughs> and like, and they'll, you know, and then they'll say, well, this is just how it's done. But like, most things don't get done. Like most of the big things, most of the things that affect people's day-to-day -day lives are getting worse. They're not addressing them. They're just, we're just hoping that our, the right person, just like that day cares <laughs> about that issue to pass it. And that's just, it's just a really broken system that that's when, the, that that's the pushback is that we have, to, we have to be in this broken system and go along to get along for the opportunity that might they someday, if we're lucky, just in case, maybe our bill will get heard. And, but, 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 and what's striking about it is how often like occasionally people will speak on an amendment and then withdraw it. As though like and in some ways, at least you are bringing more attention to your amendment. And I guess you get a gold star for doing that. But if you aren't carrying it through and you never thought you were carrying it through, you can also just hold a press conference. Like there, there are other yeah. ways of drawing attention to the issue that aren't like making people do work for no clear, clear end. And Jonathan, you talked about yeah. the voting so, rights package and what happened there. Yeah, well, before, before um, do, I'll, I'll quickly talk about other examples of this before, and that's another good example of amendments. But like you'll see cases like this, like just um, earlier this month, when you had the kind of the COVID extent, rules extension bill that they had in the house and there were 21 amendments filed and 17 of them were withdrawn. Um, and then even back in, I believe this is 2018, it was in that session uh, that when the house had a healthcare reform bill and they had 174 amendments were, withdrawn, were, were filed by reps and 144 of them were withdrawn. So like 83% of the amendments were withdrawn, which makes you wonder like, why did you make your staff go through the process of writing these amendments that you knew you were going to withdraw? It's a great question. Why? Why, why do you think they do that? It's, it's unclear to me. Just, uh, often if they think that like maybe the stars will align and we'll finally get in. Is it a resume or, builder? Is it like, look at the amendment I found? I think it's a resume. I think it's to make people, I think it's to placate us. It's to placate mm -hmm. progressives, it's to placate their members. It's to be able, you know, it's to, they'll go back to their community. They'll say, I filed an amendment for that, but it didn't get passed. Right. You know, it's to placate. But it it's, to, it's, to, it's to go about the process. Yeah. It's to go about the process of pretending that they mm -hmm. care about people while actually not pretending or fighting for us, right? It's the lie. It's this the is lie what you the had talked in Massachusetts consistently tells its voters that it is going to do something to make their lives better and never do it. But we will pretend, we will go through this, we will go through this like, like pretend, this play act. Cause it is, it's a play act. I'm gonna put out a bill that won't, that won't even get voted on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it up and then I'm gonna take it away. Then you've done nothing. 
<laughs> right? You've done nothing. You've literally done nothing. <laughs> wow. Um, it is all for show. It's all for show. I think it's, so I just want to back up and explain like what we're talking about because I think people don't quite understand the polling a sponsor. So it, it, it is just that simple. It is just the simple idea that like you, somebody says, I have a bill and you say, I want to amend that bill. And then the speak, and then most times the speaker will just say, you're not going to. I need you to take that bill away so that we can just move this forward. Because again, most bills, they want it done with it. They release it to the members the night before that morning, and they want to pass it by two or three o'clock that day. Mm -hmm. So they don't even want to discuss the bill, let alone how you might fix it. And so that's what they're doing. They're, they're literally, they're going into a back room and the speakers people are saying, we don't want to waste time voting on this thing that again will have an impact on people's lives because you know it's not gonna pass so like screw you and screw the things that it cares about because we need to get this done by three so people can go home right that's the attitude not like we're gonna take a week discussing this legislation because it's actually gonna be important which it probably won't be in fairness um <laughs> uh, like, and so we're gonna take the time right no they're gonna we're gonna wait for the last second to pass the budget and then keep everybody up all night we're not gonna spend a month planning the fucking budget and doing some timely things to, to have a, a discussion that brings regular people in and makes it a better budget we're gonna wait till the last second we're gonna scram it all together and we're gonna make you stay up all night for three days for no reason at all except we're all really bad at this uh right so like well, these no, are the problems so it, it goes it, through this process but yeah. it's not real it's not a real process i think it's important to note that they are saying they're gonna sponsor they're saying they're gonna amend the bill and then just telling the speaker no they're not so nothing has happened literally nothing has happened of substantive in that process. All right, go ahead, Adriana. I was just gonna say that like, there, it, it's not random. It's not that they're bad at this. It's, you know, the reason that they, they put forward bills with, that are, you know, 800 pages with three hours before a vote on it is because, it's, it's because they don't want people to read the bill. They don't want people to uh, organize around the bill. They don't, you know, they, they already have, they, right? They, we know who we're talking about, speaker and leadership and their donors and the group of people that controls the state house and what's allowed to pass there, they have pre-decided what is going to pass and what is not going to pass. Mm -hmm. So they, yeah, they, they make that this was, that's... thing so that, so that it cannot, in fact, be any different from the way that they have pre-decided it to go. I just want to say that that is the use of a good amendment because I totally agree. That fixed the thing that I said. <laughs> <laughs> As a good example, my amendment. Uh, that's said. exactly the amendment to what I said is right. You have fixed the thing that I was talking about. Sorry, well, I I also want to jump in and and just talk a little bit. And this I've only realized today. Like I learned so much from you guys on this <laughs> podcast. So I just love it. Um, you know, progressives could be using amendments to bring up anything. We talk all the time about these black boxes where you, it goes into a committee and like the committees are all, the, the chairs are appointed by the speaker and the people are on there because the speaker approved them and you, know, you, you can't see how they vote and like blah, blah, blah. We complain all the time about that part of the process. And yet anyone could bring anything up as an amendment, an entire bill and force a vote. Mm -hmm. We don't have to go through that process. And yet, what happens? Everybody pulls their amendments. Mm -hmm. Everybody, like, they put up an amendment so that they can say, I have an amendment. Look at, look at how good I am. Look my constituents at the list of amendments that I sponsored. And then they deny that amendment. They kill that amendment themselves. So that, I mean, do, what do they get credit for? <laughs> Right, they put on their resume that they were the ones who sponsored it, and then do they put on their resume that they were the ones that killed it? <laughs> it reminds me of kind of an amusing dynamic in which many legislators who are always horrified at the idea of people while calling pot, like full on policy amendments also file policy amendments that they just withdraw, but like you're still <laughs> making it look by filing it, it almost looks as though you want it to be voted on to the average person. So like, it looks as though you would actually carry that forward to do something that you're, you're also telling your colleagues is just beyond the pale to do. And like, obviously yep. anything if you would amend it should be relevant to what you're discussing, but they just take so much off the table immediately. With the one exception is one thing that you had alluded to before, is 
the times that amendments actually do get through tend to be when it's kind of has the, the good graces of house leadership, something that they draw, that they, they put together. Sometimes that actually did have process, even though that for some reason they can't make it a bill itself and do it that way. An example of that would be the Roe Act provisions last year. There was a process, to her credit, Claire Cronin did have like meetings with a number of state reps to figure out what they could pass that would get people support before putting something together. The opposite of doing that is what the House did recently when it came to voting reforms, where when there's an ongoing discussion about extending some of the mail-in voting and early voting reforms from last year, as well as building on them with some other voting rights steps that we could take here. That had it, that, that has it kind of, that goes to the election laws committee. They would presumably report something out, that come out. Rather than doing that, going through that process uh, and without even telling the Senate that they were moving, moving anything forward, the house just decided to put together a few of the provisions together, uh, stripping out quite a bit from like the main uh, package there and pass it to a budget supplemental. Um, without telling people that that's what they were about to vote on. So like most of the reps didn't fully know how it was different than other language that they saw. So like, for instance, they, the, the kind of, what the amendment ended up doing from Representative Mike Moran was to it kind of make vote by mail permanent for only uh, the biennial state election and then any municipal election that coincides, which is none of them. Well I don't know, like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and so leaving out presidential primaries and local, like, and like pretty much all local elections from, from that and dropping things like same day registration uh, that was a part of the uh, kind of the, the larger package of the Votes Act, reforms to jail-based voting and other steps that just took, took part that they liked didn't tell anybody, added them in. And so everybody's gonna vote for it because they are like, they're decent. They're not doing harm, but they just took out a whole bunch of things without any process. Yeah. And so I just wanna talk lastly about this other piece, which is this idea that like, you know, so one of the things that um, people who are trying to pass legislation and lobbyists are do is they'll find people connected to leadership to try to sponsor their bill, right? So, and that makes sense because again, it's all a lottery. It is not based on like actual data or things that need to fix people's lives or anything else. It's like just random, or what the people of whether or not, or what, mm -hmm. right? It's not democratic in any way. It's just speaker will allow to get promoted on and passed. And so, can, and so getting somebody who's connected to the small sort of cabal of people, the small group of people who actually make decisions, having connected to them, be a person saying, yes, we should pass this bill, is a way to increase the chances that it will pass. But you get this converse problem, which then if I to go through the, the, um, the amendment process to then amend a bill, amend a budget to like for your priority, the person who's who's connect leadership is never going to force a vote, right, on your vote on your thing, because that would make them not connected to leadership. Leadership would get mad and they'd be ostracized. They'd be bullied out of being effective. And so you get this converse where like the people who can help you pass a bill because they're connected right person or they get drinks with the right person are also people who will never fight for your bill. They will never force votes on your bill. They will never speak loudly for your bill. They won't go out of their way to, attract, right? They're just, they're by definition going to quietly try to get your bill to, to the people who like it. And so you, and so you get this thing where big legislation also doesn't get amend, doesn't get votes through the amendment process because those people will, will pull it. And to Anna's earlier point, they have this weird ownership that they'll say, you can't, you can't, you can't bring this up as an amendment because it's my bill, which of course is silly. It makes no sense. And none of this is real anyway. It's all for show. Might as well show how many people are actually going to vote for this thing, right? Let's mm -hmm. get a, let's get a, let's figure out who supports things. Cause I think that's the piece. Um, and that's the last, that's the thing that I think is most important to me is like this process should be a process where we figure out how, who is for these things and who is it right? Who's for single payer and who is it? Mm -hmm. Who's for making sure that we have healthcare that actually works and who is it? Who is for making sure that we don't all burn a lot? And, from, and who our, is, who's not? from our perspective as constituents, 
is the person that I am voting for, are they actually yeah. doing the things that they're telling me that they're doing? Are they in fact yeah. getting, voting for the policies they're promising me? They're, the entire reason that I am sending mm -hmm. them to that seat and that they are getting paid for by tax dollars to do the job that I am voting for them to do. Are they doing it? And we can't yeah. and, find and that out. We can't find that out. I mean, I would say, I would, I would submit to the people of Massachusetts that the, the fact that they won't force votes and they won't take votes and they won't advocate for them is us thing out. We just have to be more sophisticated and say that clearly. That like, it's not enough to say that you'll sponsor an amendment. Mm -hmm. I need you to know that you, I need you to force a roll call or I don't believe that you actually support it. I think you're lying. I don't, you know, the same way that they pass a bill on education and they don't fund it. Like they promise us every year they care about our kids but they don't fund it like they care about our kids. So I, I just think like we need to be we need to be clear that this process is not real and stop engaging in it and be clear that they're lying to us. If you won't vote on it, then you don't believe in it. End of story. And stop uh, like, promoting these people who put on their now stop saying oh they, we love this person because they 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 sponsored an amendment. Like if they if they pull that amendment, if they withdraw that amendment, we gotta stop supporting that person. Yeah, um, and was was going to note with. Uh, hold on a second. I was just going to uh, talk amongst yourselves. I'll get back to my. <laughs> um, yes. I Amendments. The reason you know, one <laughs> of the many reasons you know our state politics is deeply broken. <laughs> yeah, that is the weird thing. That go ahead, Jonathan. Yeah, that it, that it's just an, just kind of reiterating that point of how. It, it's just a kind of a bizarre phenomenon when people ask you to support amendments that they are going to withdraw. That which reminds me of the point I wanted to make, which is that it, it creates a certain type of, of cynicism or like a, um, yeah, I think cynicism is probably the, the, the best word for what I'm thinking about. If, if you're an activist and you're constantly contacting your legislator about an amendment that the filer withdraws, and then you contact your legislators about something the filer withdraws, and you keep doing that, it breeds a cynicism in the process itself. And then to some extent, right, you're right to be cynical about that part of the process, but it becomes dangerous if that breeds into other parts of the process and makes you not want to engage because you feel like you're just like, that you're having engaged in a bunch of like, we're pretending to lobby and you're pretending to advocate situation. Yep, that's what they want. They want nobody engaged, you know. <laughs> Um, it, it's like how during that period in the pandemic when it was just a few members of leadership in the room uh, operating under unanimous consent and meaning that nobody present objects and they could just pass bills with nobody being in the building and it was kind of the ideal mode of operating <laughs> oh, yeah uh, it, was the, it was visually what it usually is in reality behind it, well time. said <laughs> well thank you so much my friends um Wonderful to have you as always. Uh, and uh, next week, who knows what we'll talk about. If you want to tell us what to talk about, <laughs> you can email us, let us know. And if you want me to, um, to have better uh, sound effects and not put them at the wrong times like I did last week, <laughs> then um, donate somehow. <laughs> we're, we're, getting, we're getting goofy today. Um, it's 90 degrees outside. We're getting <laughs> uh, <laughs> Jordan's on vacation. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. If you're still here, we love you, and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, everyone. Yeah.